Hey there. Ready to dive into some machine learning magic? Always up for that. Awesome. So today, we're tackling a question that I'm sure keeps every ML enthusiast up at night. How to choose the ultimate optimization algorithm. You know, the one that's going to give you that extra edge. It's the holy grail, isn't it? Finding that perfect optimizer. Exactly. And you sent over some really interesting research on two of the heavyweights in the game. Mm. Atom and Stochastic Gradient Descent, or SGD for short. Ah, uh, yes. The classic rivals. Right. It's like the battle of the optimization titans. Yeah. And this paper really digs into why Atom, despite being like everyone's go-to for its speed and all, might not always be the champion we think it is. Yeah, it is kind of funny, right? Atom is often the default. Like you said, it's fast, it's efficient, doesn't require a ton of fiddling around, which, let's be honest, is a huge plus when you're elbow deep in a project. For sure. Who wants to spend hours tweaking parameters? Right, but that's what makes this research so interesting. It uncovers this hidden trade-off with Atom. It's like, yeah, it might be sprinting ahead in the short term, but when it comes to generalization. Okay, got to stop you right there. Generalization. For anyone who's new to this whole machine learning world, what are we talking about here? Good point. Generalization is all about how well a model, after being trained on a specific set of data, can handle new unseen data. It's like you can memorize a cookbook cover to cover, right? Sure. Doesn't mean you can actually, like, cook. Ah. Sadly, I can relate to that. You need to be able to adapt, handle new ingredients, unexpected situations. That's generalization in the world of machine learning. Makes sense. So where does Adam fall short in this whole generalization game? Well, the paper gives this really cool example. Imagine you're training a model using a dense net architecture on, say, the CIFAR-10 data set. Pretty standard stuff in image recognition. Yeah. The researchers found that initially, Adam, true to form, just takes off. Lower error rates, faster training, the whole package. But then it hits this plateau and its performance on a separate test set. Well... It doesn't look so great compared to SGD. So it's like Adam aced the training round but choked when it came to the real deal. Yeah. New images it's never seen before. Exactly. It's like it got too focused on the training data, memorized all the little details, but didn't really grasp the underlying you know, essence of the images. Interesting. So this generalization gap, as they call it in the paper, this isn't a completely new discovery, right? People have been trying to like tweak and improve Adam for a while now. Oh, yeah, for sure. There have been a bunch of attempts to address this, algorithms with, frankly, some pretty cool names. Any Atom, AMS grad, you name it. But the paper highlights a key point. Most of these modifications, they kind of miss the root cause of the issue, which is how Atom handles gradient scaling. Gradient scaling. Okay, time for a quick breakdown. For the folks tuning in who are still getting their feet wet with machine learning, how would you explain gradient scaling? All right, imagine you're trying to find, let's say, a specific building in a huge city and you're using a map on your phone. Yeah. Picture it. Go on. So gradient scaling is like adjusting the zoom level on that map as you're navigating. Now, Adam, being an adaptive method, is constantly tweaking that zoom, zooming in, zooming out, trying to quickly pinpoint the exact location. OK, I'm with you. So Adam is all about those quick zooms, those on-the-fly adjustments, trying to find the shortcut, right? Exactly. While SGD is more like setting a comfortable zoom level and just methodically you know, going street by street. Exactly. No frantic zooming in and out, just steady exploration. And what's fascinating is, this research shows that that steady approach often leads to like a better overall understanding of the map, so to speak. So less about those flashy moves, more about really getting to know the terrain, which translates to better generalization in the machine learning world. Exactly. And the researchers, they didn't just stop at identifying the problem. They actually came up with this really cool solution. OK, I like where this is going. Hit me with it. They call it SWATS, which stands for switching from Atom to SGD. SWATS, I like it. Has a nice ring to it. But how does it actually work? It's like having a brilliant choreographer for your algorithms, right? Okay, I'm visualizing it. So the performance starts with Adam in the spotlight. Makes sense. Got to leverage that initial speed. Exactly. Adam takes the lead, those rapid improvements early in the training. But, and here's the key, behind the scenes, SWATS is keeping a close eye on things. Monitoring Adam's every move. You got it. It's looking at how Adam is adjusting its zoom levels, or to be technical, the learning rate adjustments. So watching for when Adam starts getting a little too comfortable in one spot. Precisely. And here's the magic. When those adjustments start to shrink, when Adam's getting a bit too, you know, set in its ways, SWATS knows it's time for a change. Time for SGD to take over. Exactly. 
it seamlessly transitions the lead role to SGD. Let's SGD take the reins and explore the uh, solution space with its steady, consistent steps. No drama, just steady progress. Love it. So it's not like a set time, like, okay, after X minutes, switch. It's more about SWAT recognizing a pattern in Adam's behavior yeah. and then making a judgment call. That's exactly it. And the beauty is it's all automatic. They actually came up with this really neat projection method to like pinpoint the optimal switchover point. So no fiddling around with extra settings, no hyperparameter headaches. Exactly. It just works. Elegant. I like it. <sighs> but the million dollar question, right? Does it actually lead to better performance? All right, spill the beans. Did SWATs hold up under pressure? Oh, they definitely put it through the ringer. Image classification with ResNet, DenseNet, even language modeling with LSTMs, QRNNs, you name it, they tested it. Wow, language modeling too. That's a whole different beast than image recognition. For sure. And the results, well, they were fascinating to say the least. I mean, with the highlights. So in image classification, especially on CIFAR 10 and tiny ImageNet, SWATs consistently either matched or straight up beat Adam on accuracy. No kidding. Yeah. So it's not just like a theoretical win. Yeah. It actually delivers on that generalization promise. Exactly. But there were some interesting quirks along the way. Oh, like what? Remember how we talked about tiny image net being a bit of a challenge? Yeah, definitely a tougher nut to crack. Well, when they ran SWATs on that, there was this like initial dip in performance right after the switch from Adam to SGD. Wait, really? Did it like stumble right before the finish line? It kind of looked that way, but then, and this is the really cool part, after that little dip, it just took off again and ended up surpassing Adam. Wow. So it took a step back, reassessed, and then just blew past Adam in the end. That's wild. What about the language modeling tasks? Was it the same story there? That's where things get a little more nuanced. Adam actually held its own surprisingly well there, even outperformed plain SGD in some cases. So no clear winner in the language modeling arena? Not really, no. It seems like Adam might have a slight edge there, but SWAT still achieved very comparable results. Fascinating. So it seems like the takeaway here is there's no one-size-fits-all optimizer that reigns supreme across the board. You got it. The best tool for the job really depends on the specific problem you're tackling. The data, the architecture, all of it plays a role. It's like having a well-stocked toolbox. Sometimes you need a hammer, sometimes a screwdriver, sometimes you even need to get creative and combine tools in unexpected ways to get the best results. Exactly. And that's the beauty of this whole SWATS concept, right? It highlights the power of combining the strengths of different approaches, even if they seem like, you know, rivals on the surface. Absolutely. It's like a dynamic duo of optimization algorithms. This has been such a fascinating dive into the world of optimization. It just goes to show you never know where innovation is going to come from. Sometimes the most elegant solutions are right there in front of us, just waiting for someone to connect the dots. Couldn't agree more. Well, on that note, thanks for joining me on this deep dive. And for everyone listening, keep experimenting, keep those optimization engines running, and we'll catch you in the next episode.